Hi, I'm Tats from Cork Berlin, and we are at Cork Berlin here uh, with Reverb. So uh, let me show you around. This is where all the exciting stuff happens. So the idea with this space, or actually Cork Berlin in general, is that we're very spontaneous and hands-on. We try things out as soon as ideas come up. And this is where the ideas become physical things. So uh, our favorite machine, my favorite machine, our favorite machine is our CNC here. We process metals mostly, mostly aluminum. We can do steel, so we're doing like, you know, housings, casings. We also do a lot of the mechanical assembly because we've got loads of mechanics in the acoustic synthesis uh, sound engine. So we do, in fact, all of that here right now. So we won't do any production in here, but one-offs, prototypes, all of that happens in-house. So CNC, we've got a laser machine, we've got a paint booth currently filled with uh, inventory of our book that we're launching today, actually. This is all about making stuff. So we're really into the idea that uh, with our instruments, people get to kind of customize it, modify it, make it their own thing. And, and we think that's a really important thing for machines or inanimate kind of tools to become kind of part of you so you can create music with it. Um, so we've kind of expanded on that idea. And because we designed so many things in the space that you see, um, we were like, actually, you know what? We've designed so much, uh, we don't need to make money off it. So why don't we just publish it? So this is a book full of designs that we've done for the space. Mechanical drawings, ceiling lights, the parts shelf where we put all of our electronic components, all that stuff. And that is, uh, that is the workshop. So this is our main space. We've got mechanical fabrication engineering here, uh, software engineering, electrical. We have, uh, I don't know if you talked to Lucas. Lucas is our physics guy. He sits here usually figuring out uh, the shapes of uh, these resonators. So <clears throat> we have this, uh, this uh, internal 2U uh, rack standard. And the idea is that we've standardized the mechanical and electrical bits, a bit like Eurorack, mm -hmm. uh, but in 2U, with no, with no face plates, just PCBs, so that we can just like send off PCB data, have them come back, pop them on here. So it's really quick iterations of new ideas, new circuits. So phase seven is a combination of this thing and this thing. Everything was together, integrated, but for phase seven, we kind of took everything apart again so we can really go back to some of the, the basic kind of pickup technology, driver technology stuff, and also the circuitry around it so that we can really kind of refine uh, the sound. And all of that mixed together uh, became phase eight, which is the stuff we're showing at Subaru. Yeah. We yeah. got phase eight, but we also have four or five different tonalities or something in my Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So uh, we've got five developers who worked on, on the, these prototypes. And just, I mean, exactly what I described about making instruments your own thing. We were like, yeah, we want to demonstrate that principle by having the five developers kind of making their own prototypes. Uh, both visually and tonally. So we, this is Lucas's one. It's got sandblasted aluminium panel. He's done some uh, nice drawings <laughs> on it. And, uh, and also everyone chose their own resonators, so they all sound different. Yeah, so these are, I think this was uh, tuned for this Steve Reich piece that we performed. And then we've added some, some funny ones there. There's like a one with a face on it. Uh, so there's a lot of science that goes into these ones, but then sometimes you want to forget all that and just like doodle the shape and <laughs> see how they sound. And sometimes they work and sometimes uh, they don't. Uh, this one is tuned for, he's really good at making tribal dirty beats. Nice. He's the sick beats guy. And this is, uh, this has the resonators for that. Wow, man. Is this a, a bit of foreshadowing with what's to come with the consumer brand or the consumer model yeah. with being able to like kind of choose your own path? Yeah, absolutely. So with the sound, definitely, we want to we wanna ship the product when it's eventually available with, you know, maybe a chromatic set of resonators so you can choose your own, <laughs> cocktail spoon shaking, <laughs> choose your own uh, scales, uh, maybe choose, choose the tone that you want. Um, but also we want to kind of, you know, 
put out kind of alternative side panels, maybe wood ones, uh, maybe release the data for them as well, so you can fabricate your own 3D printing, sheet metal processing, all that is becoming very accessible. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, people can go out and, and make it really their own machine. For sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you kind of uh, established that as well with the SDK and the, and the Loeb line, you know. With the, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I think the first thing that we did was, was with the Monotron. Yeah. And we put the circuit, the schematics out so people can, can hack it. And I, also on the PCBs, I put in like little test points where people can connect like external kind of modulation sources and take signals out, put them back in. So that was really like an early version of what we're trying to do now, which is really opening up the instrument so people can interact, make it their own thing. Um, I gotta ask, I've been curious since I've met you, what prompted the shift from Korg, as we know, to start in Korg Berlin, in Korg Germany? Oh, but do you know what happened in between? No. Okay, so I was in Tokyo, I worked there okay. for 10 years, and then I was very happy. We had a really good, successful lineup. You know, analog synths were booming. Uh, they still are, I guess, and um, it, was, it was great fun. But I had a moment when I was like, I'm having so much fun now. I was a little bit scared that I'll just be trying, I'll just be like chasing that fun for another 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna punctuate my career here. And I actually left Korg. Mm. So um, I left in 2017. And that's when I moved to Germany, actually to Cologne, to work at the Red Bull Music Academy. So I do remember that time period. I just didn't realize you left Korg at that point. Yeah, I did. Yeah. But, I left, but I was still like consulting for them. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had that kind of, kind of in the back seat, but still going. Um, and then uh, after a couple of years, I don't know how to word this properly. It's fine. The company that I was working at, Yedastar, got the ax from Red Bull. And then, uh, and then so I knew I was gonna lose my job. They gave me like eight months notice or something. So I had a bit of time. And during that time, they were like, hey, we wanna start something in Germany. Do you wanna do it? And I was like, yeah. that's perfect, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that was a transition from the old job to this, uh, and we decided to do it in Berlin. The big reason was, while at RBMA, when I had a technical project, I was always coming to Berlin. So I, I already knew some suppliers who can do like metal casings, PCB, silk screen printing. I had some friends here who, who would help me with the technical stuff. So. That's what I wanted to kind of tap into. I was much more comfortable being here doing this than if it was in Cologne. So, yeah. We have a little quiet room here for, for quiet work. We therefore call it the, the library. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a place where you can obviously read books um, and study papers, or you can bring your computer in here, uh, do your coding if you want to focus time. Or if you want to chat with someone, you just come here. So this is the studio. This is the most soundproof room in in our space. This is uh, it's, it's our the type space. Of, uh, space. This is your space. Else. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time we spend in here, we're just like doing kind of technical checks, you mm -hmm. know. But sometimes it turns into a fun place. Oh yeah, here's phase five. Yeah, this is what we showed last year. Yeah. Acoustic synthesis is really about creating an instrument that's in between an acoustic and electronic instrument. So. What we're doing is very, very primitive. We're, we're hitting things and getting sound from it, you know. Right. Probably the oldest instrument, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so the basic principles are the same uh, from phase five that we showed last year. Um, the main improvements would be that, um, that actually we got really good at tuning the resonators. So, so these, we call them resonators. They could be forks, tines, whatever you want to call them. Um, these sound... Uh, way more richer, way more kind of tonally balanced now. There's been a million improvements under the hood, which I won't go into. For sure. But the basic principle is the same. So this is um, this me stroking with a stick, uh, but which is the acoustic bit, and the electronic bit is we can do that uh, without the stick, and we can actually hit it. Uh, with an electromagnetic pulse, which is coming from this coil, and we're sending a, a pulse into it, so we can hear it with a hammer, mm -hmm. but not a mechanical one, electromagnetic one. Uh, there's like a little air gap between the coil and the resonator. It's a non-contact method, and we just hit it with a field. Um, the I great... saw you turn this down. Is this 
basically like your amplifier at this point? Yeah, this one. Each each uh, each resonator has a VCA on the end, which opens when you when you hit a note. Which is how we can make them make the notes shorter. We just chop it with the VCA. But what this does is it opens up all the VCAs. So it's a bit like the pedal on the piano. Right. And the same thing happens here. So it gives you a sense of air, maybe. Okay, that's not right. So if we have this sequence, make it a bit percussive. And then if I turn this up, yeah. you get a kind of like reverb, right. airy effect, atmospheric. We can turn it right up. And in this state, I mean, you can hear me doing this, is very responsive to mm -hmm. everything that's happening around it. So the idea is to make an instrument that's very responsive to its environment, its surroundings. If we crank up the thing, I won't do it now because it might hurt our ears, but you get feedback much like with the guitar. Mm -hmm. So we want to create, you know, some synths or most synths because they're purely electronic. You you only access them through like knobs and switches and, and, and faders. And so we wanted to create something that felt a bit more alive, taking, you know, the nature of the sound making from outside of the box and for you to be able to kind of interact with it. Yeah. So and because they're physically moving, if I if I have this, I could kind of manipulate I could I could mute them with my fingers. I could you know I can uh, I can stroke the Did you just go to like a random Iser on the sequencer? Oh yeah this this is we call it shifter because it's a very simple eight step sequencer, right. which I love because it's so sort of spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Uh, but sometimes you're like, ah, I want some notes in between. The shifter kind of adds a bit of that kind of stuff that's off the grid. Nice. Like this. Yeah. I, uh, I'm particularly fond of... I talked before about how we have like loads of science in these. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we just add fun ones. Something's clipping the thread. Like all that. You can actually kind of move around the... Move around the, the resonant frequency just by kind of stroking, kind of caressing this yeah. <laughs> this face. <laughs> so, oh yeah, this one's mine. That's why we've nice. all got our names on the yeah. on the corner. So I went for like the polished aluminium kind of loop controls, and I also have a steel base. This is Earless. Uh, Earless are embedded software engineer. So uh, this one has a has a different scale. And uh, one thing I didn't show you before was um, with this electronic kind of drive and pickup system, uh, normally when you hit something acoustic, you know, you hit it, it makes a sound, and then it decays, tapers off. So, but what we can do is we can sustain notes. So by applying feedback to, from the pickup and into the driver. So hopefully this works. Wow. And you can make this run. So it's a bit out of tune, you must have been knocked about a bit. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> um, and we can keep uh, these notes happening yeah. indefinitely. So we think of this as kind of in between something, you know, you could do droney stuff, very kind of, or, or melodic stuff, or more percussive stuff. So it's got a kind of spectrum of like different things that a, a synth might do. Rhodes, Massive inspiration, whether it's also like all those different instruments that, that really kind of embraced and harnessed the power of kind of things moving and, and resonating and turning them into a signal and making that useful for, for music. That's all like all of them, massive inspirations. Um, but in kind of technical approach, uh, this is very, very different. Um, it uses electromagnetic uh, driver as, as the hammer. It has a capacitive pickup um, that's actually planar. I don't think I've seen uh, another uh, instrument use this. It's kind of like a, uh, like a capacitor, a condensed microphone. Mm -hmm. So you have a diaphragm, you have the grid, moves kind of the distance changes in between, you pick up that signal. So we use finite element analysis to figure out the geometry of the resonators themselves so that they have the frequencies that we, that we want. And once we do that, we need a way to turn those vibrations into a signal and extract them. And to do that, 
we use the capacitive pickup again with a very specific geometry that would be really kind of listening in to the modes that we want to hear that we think are pleasant. This is one application of the technology into a product. So we, you know, and it's got a potential to be a keyboard instrument. It could be, you know, like a two octave, like monologue type kind of small, uh, small keyboard instrument. It could be, it could be more. You know, we yeah. could even conceive of an eighty-eight key kind of full kind of keyboard like this. Um, oh, that would be wicked, man. Which would be awesome, yeah. <laughs> but there would be some challenges as well to overcome as the as the times of resonators get longer. We'd have to figure out how to make them shorter so they kind of fit in the space and they're not vibrating like crazy. Same thing, opposite thing on the other end where, the, where these get very sm small, so we have to kind of change the material or thickness. So we kind of have to get into solving those problems, of course. but it's all, it's all possible. It's all possible. Um, also, with this thing, where we just like heard this kind of reacting to, a, kind of you know, with all those sympathetic resonances, kind of reacting to what's happening around it. If you think of, instead of me hitting this, that we inject uh, an audio signal in, we could even think of like reverb applications, yeah. like plate spring, that kind of thing. I actually think it's impossible to completely remove your your kind of desires and instincts from. Uh, designing anything and that's what for me makes design really beautiful because you're imparting a bit of yourself to something that's external to you and when other people appreciate that that's amazing or they they change it into their thing that's even more amazing mm -hmm.